We welcome you to the beautiful city of Cincinnati, Ohio. It's game one of a four game series between the San Diego Padres and the Cincinnati Reds from Great American Ballpark. Well, in this one tonight, you'll see Joey Votto at first base for the Cincinnati Reds. He's got an 11 game hitting streak, 485 the batting average along the way with three home runs and nine runs batted in. And how about Manuel Margot? Been going very well over the last 12 games, hitting at 360 with four homers and 10 runs batted in. Both in the lineup tonight in game one of the series. Welcome you inside the broadcast booth. Welcome to Padres baseball. Don Orsillo along with Mark Grant. It is game one of this series and tonight we'll see Jolie Chassin on the mound. Chassin tonight looking for win number 12 of the year. Couldn't come at a better time pitching on the road. Remember earlier in the year his road home splits were just totally opposite. Well he is making progress the last three or four road starts. Let's go back to July 1st. Since then the veteran right hander 5 and 0 the nice ERA very few walks and the strikeouts are nice to almost a strikeout per innings pitched. Only 189 hitting. Why? Because he's thrown the slider early, the fastball early for strikes. He'll mix in the changeup as well. But when Jolice Chassin is on with his game, the breaky ball is the, really the key. He either gets a swing and a miss or he'll get a weak ground ball, keep it on the infield. That's why you see the success. Been a tough year for the Cincinnati Reds, and the toughest part of their year has been their pitching staff. Starting rotation are a bunch of babies, and I don't say that in a mean way, but they're young. They're learning at the big league level. They're just getting rocked around the ballpark, and in this ballpark where the ball flies, it really spells havoc. 425. Look at the walks. Home runs allowed. Ranked last in Major League Baseball in all three categories. These are young pitchers trying to figure it out at the big league level. We know how difficult that can be. There's one guy though, he's a bright spot, Luis Castillo. We're going to see him in this series. I think this youngster's really got a good chance of being a good big league pitcher, but the rest of the troop, they need to pick it up. It's been a big time struggle here in Cincinnati. Padres will try to take advantage of this pitching staff for the Cincinnati Reds. It is a tough place to pitch, though. The ball flies here. The ballpark can be tough, and there's a lot of home runs. Bob Scanlon will catch up with Austin Hedges. Padres catch when we return to see how the Padres are going to approach it from the Queen City after this. Baseball brought to you by Petco, where the pets go. By 
by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup. Shop at ChooseNissan.com. And by Car Shield. Don't strike out from a big auto repair bill. When you have Car Shield, they'll get you the repair bill paid for you. Welcome you back to Cincinnati as we get ready for game one of the series. Before we get it started, let's send it down to field level in Bob Scantlin. Well, thank you, Don. Everybody knows that Great American Ballpark is a hitter-friendly place, no question about it. And if you ask any pitcher, almost invariably they'll tell you, you know what, makes no difference to me. I'm not going to change anything. I don't think about it at all. But the truth of the matter is, oftentimes it's in the back of their head. They can start changing how they pitch on the mound. And at that point, it's up to your catcher to get you back on track. Here's Austin Hedges' thought on being that force to get you locked back in. I mean, obviously, the, there's the higher likelihood of giving up a cheap homer. Uh, if that happens and the pitcher might be a little rattled, uh, I think then it's my job to go calm him down and remind him that he's good, and he just has to keep focus on executing pitches. I think uh, uh, at times just just not trusting their stuff. Um, I think I saw it a lot last year in the PCL. It's a very hitter-friendly league, and I think a lot of pitchers uh, get frustrated pitching there. Um, so, um, you know, obviously this is a good place to hit, so we just got to make sure uh, our pitchers and we are on the same program. Austin Hedges obviously is not afraid to be that voice of reason. He has some experience with it. And one of the young pitchers that he may get a chance to work with tonight is Carter Capps, a new addition to the roster. As you remember, Capps came over in the Andrew Cashner trade. Buddy Bauman getting optioned out. Now Carter pitched in 24 ball games down in AAA El Paso. 2.81 earn run average and was averaging over a strikeout per inning. So the Padres certainly happy to have him back. But right now it's time to rake the Reds. Padres will try to do some damage against Tim Adelman. Joey's Chassin going for the Padres. Padres, Reds, first pitch coming up next right here on Fox Sports San Diego. on the red legs it's nice to see early in a ball game first major league home run for Franchi Cordero and it was just a solid night for Luis Perdomo that ball is gone got Hermes Salarte gonna go to first for the out nicely done in there for strike three and the Padres win now the Padres and the Reds in game one of the series as the Padres We'll play night baseball first three games and then a day game here on Thursday. It's time now to join forces with Saquon. Pick the stick. Weigh in on Twitter for a chance to win a free foursome of golf courtesy of Saquon Resort. As you just hashtag, I'm with the last name of the broadcast you want to join forces with. If they win, you could win too. One random winner selected nightly. Follow us at Fox Sports SD for more details. 
Time now for the weather report brought to you by your always sunny San Diego Honda dealers. 76 degrees here in Cincinnati. Northeast breeze at three miles per hour and the forecast for a cloudy but right now lots of blue skies above here at Great American Ballpark. Don Orsillo, Mark Grant and Bob Scanlon with you. He's ready to work here on the mound for the Reds is Tim Adelman. Right hander ready to work to Manuel Margot with the first pitch of the ball game. And it's going to miss high for ball one. We are underway. Manuel Margot coming in, hitting a 274 of the year. Nine homers and 27 runs batted in. First appearance, 20th start for Adelman. You know what? When you look at Tim Adelman, there's really not one thing that really sticks out about the tall right hander. It's been a rough go around for these pitchers here in Cincinnati. We documented that in our game open. The high ERA, the home runs allowed. He's getting an opportunity though. And this kid pitched in independent ball, trying to make his way to the big leagues after being an organized baseball, professional baseball. So let's take a closer look to the right hander. Tim Adelman, two and four seamer changeup curveball, and slightly, little bit of a cutter. And he's been really struggling lately. A lot of hits as opposed to innings pitched. A lot of working out of the stretch, Donnie. Coming in five and nine on the year with an ERA up over five at 5.42. Shoot the numbers off the top for Manuel Margo. He's been hot. And a fly ball sent down the left field line. Headed towards foul ground, and that ball will be a foul ball. At the distance down there, down the left field line, but just kept bending away from the pole. We might see a lot of that this series. Four games here at the what pitchers call this place the not so great American ballpark <laughs> because the ball will jump. What's the over under for home runs in this four game series Ooh. combined, both teams? What do you think? That's tough. Eight? You want to go with eight? I'm going to go over. Okay. Center field, Billy Hamilton out there waiting on it. He'll take care about number one of the ball game. Marco retired. Let's check out the Padres lineup brought to you by Toyota for Andy Green. Just saw him at Well Margo in center field with Carlos Oswahe at second base. Jose Perella is in left with Don Hervis Salarte at third base. Will Myers at first base with Hunter Renfro in right. Austin Hedges does the catching with Dusty Coleman at shortstop and Jolie Chassin batting out of the nine spot. One down here in the top of the first inning, and it brings up Carlos Suarez. Hey Don, you want to know how rough it's been for Adelman? Last six starts. Sure. 0 and 5, ERA of 7.34. 30 and two thirds innings, 25 earned runs in that stretch. This is line to right down the right field line. It'll be a foul ball just to the right of the line. So I would say based on all the numbers that you have reeled off yeah. that this first inning is huge for him to get off to a good start. So important to get traffic early and we know you know I'm not going to say this is Colorado but the ball does jump. We know that that's a given. No lead is safe in this ballpark. And what is the, it the dimensions the uh, what, what makes it this way. I can only go back to Three River Stadium. I'm three river. That's Pittsburgh. Riverfront Stadium. I stand corrected. Ball jump there too. And I don't know what it is. I don't know what the elevation is here, whether it's the air, whether it's the river, whether it's Kentucky. I don't know. Now Kentucky's over there, right, right. across the river. Across right the there. river, yeah. yeah. Right field. Swahe so at 295 coming in. Two homers. Yeah, 12 runs batted in. Skip in. It's a count at two and two to Iswahe. Perella waiting on deck. Padres batting here in the first inning. Part of the three city tour for the Padres started in Pittsburgh, now here in Cincinnati before going to Los Angeles. Back home again. This one fouled off over by the Reds dugout. That looked like one of those cut fastballs that Adelman throws. Tried to bury it inside to Iswahe. They're playing him to pull. They're on the pull side in the outfield and center field. Billy Hamilton. And we notice how shallow he plays, right? Because he's got great speed and go back on some balls hit over his head. 
But a bat here for Aswahe goes full here, three and two. It's interesting, though, to see Billy Hamilton play in that shallow, yep. but as you mentioned, he can go back. It is 4-0-4 to center field here in Cincinnati. Swing and a miss, and Alleman comes back to get his Wahe. Let's check out the Reds defensively behind Adelman. Left to right of the outfield, Adam Duvall, Billy Hamilton, and Jesse Winker, third to first. Eugenio Suarez, Zach Cozart, Scooter Jeanette back with the Reds, Joey Votto at first, and Tucker Barnhart doing the catching for Tim Adelman. Two down here in the first. Who's playing third for the Reds? Eugenio Suarez. Eugenio Suarez. Let's call him Eugene. I think it was the second one was right. Yeah, I think. you had it right the first time. I did. Yeah, it was. Yeah, choppy, but you're good. Very choppy. <laughs> <laughs> and that guy there, you know, a lot, a lot to root uh, this year for the Cincinnati Reds, no. for the hometown Red Lake fans. But Joey Votto, always worth the price of admission. That's a quick second strike there to Barella. It was fun to watch. Saw him at Petco Park, of course, in that series. Another consistent year for him. While this team has not been, Votto has. 49th game for Jose Perella back in left field. And a swing and a miss on the breaking ball. He strikes out. So Adam in a clean first inning. Reds are coming up from Cincinnati. In the top of the first inning, Cincinnati coming up in the bottom of the first. As we check out the Reds lineup brought to you by Hyundai. That will be Billy Hamilton leading it off here for the Reds, and in center field with Zach Kozar, the shortstop, Joey Votto at first base, Adam Duvall in left field, Scooter Jeanette at second base. Here we go again. You ready? Eugenio Suarez is at third base. Jesse Winker is in right. Tucker Barnhart does the catching, and Tim Adelman, the pitcher. Out of the ninth spot. Less choppy? Still choppy. Fewer choppy. Fewer choppy. Jolie Chassin on the hill. Hey, continue the Jomentum. Get it? Jolie's momentum combined Jomentum. Sort of. A great movement down in the zone with his sinker and his slider. We talked about that, the breaking ball. And the, the numbers have been better on the road lately. The last three starts on the road, pitching quite well for the veteran 29 year old right hander. Is defensively in on the corners here. Solarte and Myers always a possibility that Hamilton will drop down a bunt because he can fly. Mm -hmm. One of the game's fastest players. The old adage is you can't steal first base. Only a 252 hitter. Three homers, 30 runs batted in. 104th game that he has been in. Line and that's a fair ball down the right field line to the right field corner. Hamilton is headed for second, maybe beyond. He is thinking three. Renfro's throw is cut off, and the throw to third is late and it gets away, but Chassin backs it up, fortunately, for the Padres. That's a triple for Billy Hamilton to start the bottom of the first inning for the Reds. 
his ninth triple of the year. The Cincinnati Reds is a team lead in that category in triples. Why? Because of leadoff hitter number six, Billy Hamilton. And as soon as this one's off the bat, a lot of people are saying that's a triple. Right out of the gate, he was thinking three. He's fun to watch. Let's have their leadoff hitter at third base to begin things here in the bottom of the first inning. You know what you said, how you can't steal first base? That's an old baseball adage. Mm -hmm. The other one is speed. It's something you can bring to the ballpark each and every night. Speed never slumps. I thought that was hustle. Not everybody has speed. Okay. <laughs> well, if you have if you yeah. have speed, you yeah. can always use it. You could use it every night. Zach Kozar. <laughs> yeah, hustle kind of the same. Thing, hustle though too. You're right. right. You don't yeah. have to have blazing speed. You can always give hustle. Right? You can always hustle. Kozart batting now, hitting at 314. The all-star shortstop for the Reds. Now as a pitcher, here's a situation to where if you get a strikeout, that's great. But get an out. Infield is back. It's almost as if you're conceding a run. Okay, nobody out. Triple guys on third. Okay, I want to get this guy. Whether it's a ground ball, whether it's a fly ball, get an out. Don't worry about giving up that run. It's a long game. And if you get the strikeout, hey, that's just uh, that's a bonus. You're a third of the way home. Four and he loses Kozar. So first and third down with nobody out here in the bottom of the first inning. Check out the Padres defensively brought to you by Lincoln. Left around the outfield, Jose Perella, Manuel Margot, and Hunter Renfro. Harris Salarte, Dusty Coleman at short, Carlos Suave at second base, Will Myers at first, and Austin Hedges doing the catching for Jolie Chassin. First and third, nobody out here for the Reds. Joey Votto coming up, batting in the three spot. Toting a 311 average. Seeing that he is a patient hitter. It'd be an understatement, but he lines this one promptly on the first pitch to right field for a base hit. Billy Hamilton will score. Kozart to third. It's an RBI single for Votto, and it's a 1 0 Cincinnati lead. All the walks for Votto, and he came up sure. there swinging the bat. You know, there comes a time if, if a hitter is known for taking pitches, working the at bat, there are times when hitters go up there and they'll ambush you. You try to get ahead as a pitcher, thinking, okay, he's going to work the count, I want to get ahead. That looked like an off speed pitch. And Votto stays on it, it's elevated a little bit, crushes that ball to right field for the RBI single. First and third. It's on top one nothing still nobody out Adam Duvall coming up 24 home runs in 107 games for Duvall 75 runs batted in starting off ahead is Chassis that's key with the breaking ball very key Find his bearings here in the first inning. Yeah. Working down. The pitch to Vada was up. Once again, you'll sacrifice. You'll give up a double play here for a run. Try to work that ground ball. Triple by Hamilton started the inning. The walk by Kozar. RBI single by Joey Votto and the Reds they jumped on top one to nothing after their starting pitcher tonight. Tim Adelman retired the Padres in order in the top of the first inning on a fly out and back to back strikeouts. Swing and a miss for Duvall goes lunging that pitch down and away. That's that slider we're talking about from Chassin. Out of the hand it looks like a strike but then. Good depth, good break to it. Out of the zone for the swing and a miss. Oh, 
long look at third for Chassin. And the liner foul right up over the head of Kozart at third base. Let's take a look at the keys to the game brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers. Harass the Hoya. Tim Adelman, Georgetown. Hoyas. And limit the long ball. We know that uh, this ballpark is a launching pad. Both teams capable of uh, hitting some home runs. So keep the ball in the yard. Especially for Jolice Chassin. Bounces in and gets away. Nobody's going to advance though. Hedges able to get it quickly. Like Kozart from third was going to try and he stopped. And Bono did a few steps off the back. He didn't go either. Yeah, I thought Kozart was going to give it a chance. Uh, he was about a third of the way down. This ball up the left side of Austin. Watch Kozart on the left. Shuffle, shuffle. He did not thinking about it. Nope. Hey, there's only there's nobody out. You've got runners at the corners. You've got the heart of the order up. Let's try to drive that run in, not take the chance of getting thrown out at the plate for out number one. Ozard at third, Votto across the diamond at first, a run in. Still nobody out here in the first inning. That is strike three. Chassin needed that first strike out of the night for the Padres right hander. Down, you're talking about getting those bearings straight. How about the release point straight on this last pitch? He may have gotten a call, but that's a hang with him. 94 with a little bit of 2C movement. Great movement on the outer half. Getting the call is huge for Jolice. Now the double play is in order. One pitch, get out of this little jam. First and third, one out, and here is Scooter Jeanette. 292 average, 18 homers, and 60 runs batted in. Milwaukee Brewer. This is a toss over by Chassin. Has Votto back to the bag. A little drop in there for a strike. Jeanette coming to the Reds claimed off waivers from the Brewers in the March and the spring training. It's the day in fact the Reds left their spring training complex in Goodyear. Little Ohio where the Cleveland Indians and the Cincinnati Reds share their spring training site. That's a good one. I like that. Little Ohio. Have you been there? I went back to Ohio but my city was gone. There was no train station. There was no downtown. Scooter Jeanette was born in Cincinnati. Come on. So the fact that he's now a red is pretty cool. Yeah. Lived in nearby Lebanon until he was nine years old. And then the family moved to Sarasota. He's still born here. And now a red. Big cut there has him down one and two. Think about it. Growing up as a baseball fan, Cincinnati, Sarasota, you got your spring training down oh, yeah. there. That's uh that's all year round baseball. Right in your own backyard. Ed Smith Stadium in Sarasota. Who's there now? The Orioles are there now. Because I know the White, the White Sox were yep. there for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Big pitch here for Chassin. And it's got it back to Chassin. He'll get a second base for one to first. Going to be close, and it is in time. Double play. A well, strikeout to double play for Chassin gets out of the inning with minimal damage. Just the one run allowed. Nicely done. Right back at him and initiating that double play is Jolice Chassin. Reds have a 1 0 lead.
Second inning, and it's time now for the Arco top tier player profile. Well, seven game hitting streak for Jan Harris Solarte coming in. 11 hits during that seven gamer. 423 average. Home run. Four RBIs and six runs scored for Solarte, who is back at a more familiar third base tonight after some starts at shortstop for the Padres. You know, I like pressure type hitting, and Jan Harris has been that kind of guy who's been hitting well with runners in scoring position. 352. So hopefully he has a lot of opportunities like that tonight. And you know what, Don? Thinking about last half inning, considering all told, that's huge. A one run, yeah, that is very huge for the Padres. And the sign of a veteran right there, calming down after what could have really rattled him. This is the other way to left, and Duvall moves over to make the catch on a liner that was slicing for out number one. Good contact for Solarte, but in the neighborhood of Adam Duvall out there and left. And that'll bring up Will Myers. You know, I would think in a ballpark like this, some hitters get a little froggy to where they want to uh, uppercut a little bit, kind of launch, right? Change the launch angle just a little bit, maybe. I'm, I'm sure you, every hitter is not going to come in here and not think that. Just put a good, like Mark McGuire said the other day. He said, you know, my objective was to beat the ball, not to have the ball beat me and just make good solid contact. And there's Major League McGuire. Just make good contact, and you know what? If you hit it right, it'll go. It's going to be a good line drive, hard grounder, or a ball that's out of the park. Here's a ground this to third base. Suarez. Good throw that is just in time. Good hard accurate throw to first base, and Joey Votto. Stretching on the this side to retire Myers two down. And good hustle by Will Myers. This look at see the, see the crow hop and taking a little bit of time, and it gets it by a full stride. Those are some big strides from Will Myers. Let's watch the big Caballo out of the box. Big strides, pumping up. That's what you want each and every time. Two down here in the second inning. Hunter Renfro take strike one. Roman has retired the first five Padres he has faced in this game. Two by way of the K. Big swing there from Renfro. That one's got a little pause in that delivery. You notice that? Little of, hitch. Yes. Now whether he toe taps. And watching his top half, I'm going to focus on the bottom half. This he's got a little hitch in the uh, the leg. Timing mechanism, hitters have them, pitchers have them. Swing and a miss, and Renfro strikes out to end the inning. A good start for Adam, and he has struck out three, one nothing red.
All the concussions that have been going on with, uh, it seems like everyone happens with a hockey mask. I've always worn the hockey mask. It's definitely more comfortable, more stable, but um, I th it looks like a lot of the the concussions are coming from that mask, so I decided to switch it up. I saw a lot of film of other catchers wearing the two-piece mask that the balls were glancing off, and they seem to be fine, so um, just trying to mix it up a little bit. Austin Hedge is talking about a change in masks. He's normally using the goalie style mask. Tonight you'll see he's using the more classic style. Now he is experimenting with a couple of different cages. One of them apparently actually has some spring technology in it to try to deflect the ball and absorb some of the shot guys. But clearly it's something that guys are worried about. No scientific data to support not using the goalie style mask. He's just saying I've seen a lot of concussions with those guys wearing them. He's going to try something different guys. He's right about that. David Ross, I remember on uh, two occasions, ended up with a hockey mask with concussions and went to this mask afterwards, changed up. Alex Avila doing the same thing. Yep. The Detroit Tigers now at the Chicago Cubs and going old school. You know, I'm, I'm not a, um, I'm not an engineer, but when you look at the, there's the hockey style mask. You see, there it's more in front. There's more. Uh, how would you say, it, Don? In front, it's not as flat. There's more rounded in front, right? No, so for deflection, right? You, well, you'd think it would, you wouldn't be hit flush as a result. It'd be more of a glancing thing, and I think right. that's the idea. But the ones that hit him were flush. Yes. Which is hardly, you know, I mean, that's the bad timing. One. Yeah. So it's like, okay, do I need more protection, perhaps? Okay. He, he, after this pitch, I'll tell you what. When, when I said I wasn't an engineer, and that might come to a shock to some people, you're not. No. Coming in from center is Margot. And that is out number one. Now, when you look at the masks, the composite, Bob mentioned the cage, right? Mm -hmm. I want to focus on the cage. That oh. one's off the side. I mean, this one's dark. That's like the temple area, yep. right? Now, it's not so much, to me, it's not so much the cage itself and the shell. I want to know can't somebody come up with something with the innards, like that gel or something that's more shut? You know what I'm saying? See the padding around the chin and the, the forehead area for Austin? Yep. Now, I'm not sure what the composite or the material is within that. But it helps brace the blow, I think. Right. And what yeah. I'm saying is I would like to know, maybe, maybe it is the best, maybe it's just regular padding, whatever. But come up with some type of shock-type gel-resistant composite, something or other, that would help Less in the event. Jarring. Yeah, yeah, you can see the springs in the upper uh, left right there? I've never seen that before. That's pretty cool. Right there. Well, if Austin would move up a little bit. Yeah, right there. I've never seen that. Have you ever seen that? No. Winker will follow this one back. Right fielder batting with one down here in the bottom of the second inning. Red's got a run in the first. We're threatening though. They got the run and had runners at first and third with nobody out. Strike out and then a double play grounder to do by Jeanette. Here's the best analogy I can come up with. And bear with me here. Remember playing with silly putty as a kid? Sure. Remember you roll it up into a ball? You could bounce that on the ground as hard as you want and it's round. But yet if you slightly put it on table and press it, it gives, right? Right. So the harder the resistance against the silly putty, it absorbed that shock. I would say you got to come up with some type of composite to where it has that type of principle. So you want to put silly putty. Yeah, let's put silly putty in there. <laughs> and then you could the, also get the funny papers and put them on there, and you could take the, the you get print the comics. Off. Yes. It's backwards when yeah. you look at it. But do you see what I'm saying, though? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> strike three call. Chassin with his second strikeout of the night has out number two of the second inning. Well we mentioned the slider we mentioned the off speed stuff this one right here the back door slider great frame by Austin Hedges. And I think I saw Austin Hedges give a little wink to Chassin on that last pitch there. Well placed to Winker. Two down here in the second brings up Tucker Barnhart the catcher. High ball, center field. Margot started back. Now he's going to come in and has time to recover and makes the catch and ends the inning. A one, two, three inning for Shasim. One nothing Reds.
Brought to you by Ram Trucks. Let's go to Yankee Stadium. Todd Frazier at the plate. It'll be a 2 1 to Frazier. A line drive to short. It's caught. No, it's not. Oh, he goes to second for some reason. Over to first. One, one out, two outs. What's going on here at the stadium? He's caught in a pickle now. He's out of the baseline. And that's a triple play, Susan. I am not going to be a part of that, but that was a triple play. You don't see it too often. No. It's the first game for Frazier, too. First and second, nobody out is the perfect recipe for a triple play. That's why, you know, we've, I've seen it before where teams will put on a hit and run first and second. You're flirting with disaster because a line drive, the runners are going. It's a, it's a triple play. Saw so two in one night. Gary Gaetti at third base for the Minnesota Twins with runners at first and second. Sharply hit ground balls close to the bag at third. He sure. turned two in one night. That particular instance at Yankee Stadium was bases loaded. A run did score. They got caught in that pickle, right? Allowing right. to run the score. Mm -hmm. So they at least did get one run out of it. Austin Hedges leading it off here in the third inning. Softly grounded down the first baseline. Adelman says he's got it, and he'll apply the tag. For the first out here in the third inning, Adelman has retired the first seven Padres he's faced in the game. Staying off the sweet spot of the bat there of Austin Hedges with a good breaking ball, Adelman did. Here comes Dusty Coleman with one away here in the third inning. 308, three homers and seven runs batted in. A big day on Saturday, his third career home run. Your high three hits against the Pirates on Saturday. Called up on July the 24th from AAA El Paso. 14 home runs for the Chihuahuas this year, 46 RBIs. So far since the call up, hitting at 308. Pitch coming up for Tim Adelman. We have one down here in the third inning. Field on the shallow side and straight away. Coleman will try the bunt, but Adelman spryly off the mound. Throws to first to retire Coleman. Two down. Pitch a game break coming up. The Nationals are back home to take on the Miami Marlins. Nationals just taking two out of three from the Chicago Cubs in impressive fashion. You had a chance to visit with Dusty Baker, the manager of the Nationals. Former Reds manager. What a tremendous guy Dusty is. He sure is, isn't he? Had a chance. Yesterday was the first time I ever met him. Really? I never crossed paths with him before and uh, had the chance to meet him yesterday. Tremendous guy. It really is. They are a very good team, the Washington Nationals. Their bullpen now I was is just, really good. I was just going to ask, how, how did wow. the bullpen look? They had it lined up as they. Uh, beat the Cubs yesterday came from behind, but you get Madsen, Doolittle, Kensler, wow. seven, eight, nine now in the bullpen as we saw, not very good nope. early in the year. Now they are. So they're primed and ready for a postseason run. Hey Joel, he's gonna go yard at this place. On the ground to short, Cozart slides to his right. And throws to first in plenty of time to get Chassin. Adelman's retired the first nine, one nothing Reds.
Play along here to the bottom of the third inning. Hey, talking about Max Scherzer, the average starter in the big leagues, starter ERA is 4.49. Max Scherzer is 2.21. Of course, had the neck problem. Had it actually before the home run, and the home run did not help things. It exasperated the situation, came out of that game. It takes a lot. Fortunately, back now for the Nationals. Tim Adelman, the pitcher, leading it off here in the home half of the third inning for the Reds. 2 4 27 at the plate as a hitter this year. We're only 125 hitter in his second big league campaign. Shasin, after giving up a triple, a walk, and an RBI single, has retired everybody else that he has faced since two strikeouts. Good breaking ball, drop it in there to make it one and two. You know, you, I love stories about players like Adelman. He pitched an independent ball in 2012 and 13. Prior to the 16th season, he worked in a deli in the D.C. area before spring training. Fly ball to center. Margot is shallow, and it's right to him for the first out. Well, we talk about location being key for any pitcher. But the success, the recent success, has been, I think, because of the slider of Chassin. This is against the Giants, and look at the numbers. Prove it. 142 average opponents batting against that slider. Front side opens up. It's just off the plate a little bit. Look at two strikes there, right on the outside corner. I tell you what, he has placed those pitches very, very nicely recently, and that's why you see the recent success from the right-hander. One down here in the third inning. Billy Hamilton, the batter, triple. His first time up as he takes strike one. We always talk about strengths and weaknesses. Well, we just documented the slider, 142 opponents bending average. How about ineffective fastball, 282, and then the uh, rest of the arsenal for Chassin. Sometimes I think he tries to overthrow the fastball a little bit. Kind of yanked that one there. Loses control in the yeah. process. Oh, absolutely. He tried to hump it up just a little bit more, maybe create a little bit more arm speed, maybe with the upper half getting to, you know, getting out in front, and it just throws everything out of whack. You know, as a pitcher, I can only speak for myself, but. And Bob might want to chime in on this, but you know, when you feel you don't have your best stuff, it's all part of the learning process. You know, you think, oh, if I try harder as far as with my arm, you know, I'm going to really try to get up on top and get through and, and create more arm speed rather than just taking it easy, slowing it down a little bit. Because when you feel you don't have it, you actually kind of, when you feel like you don't have it, in actuality, you do kind of still have the same type of arm speed. You just might not feel it that night. I remember one game in particular was at Anaheim Stadium with the Mariners, and Dave Valley was catching me. It was like the third inning. I came in between innings, and, he's, and I said, gosh, Val, I just don't have anything today. And he goes, dude, you're throwing the ball great. Now, he might have been lying. But right? in your because head, it was... But, yeah, but he goes, just, you know, throw to the glove. Don't overthrow, mm -hmm. and, and we'll take it from there. So you slow it down? Yeah, you slow it down, and um, it's something Mark Davis and I always talked about, the former Padre left-hander won the Cy Young Award in 1989. We used to play catch in the outfield, and we used to work on our mechanics just slowing everything down. When you really slowed it down, in actuality, you were kind of going at the pace you should be going if you're too quick with your delivery, right? Mm -hmm. Hamilton was after that. Foul tips it. Stays alive here, two and two. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming up. Hey, Bob Scanlon, uh, you got any tips as far as when you're not really feeling great or maybe overthrowing just a bit? But I had that exact same experience that you had. I'm sure all pitchers do at some point. And I remember one time my pitching coach coming out to the mound to talk to me in the midst of a, a rough outing. Down the right field line again, it just foul. And after the game, he said, you know, Bob, I came out there to talk to you, and your eyes were like pinballs. Just 
is so big and you were so wound up and you were trying to throw the ball so darn hard. And it was the first time that I real realized how much I was trying to overthrow the ball. And at that point, I just realized, look, in the key clutch situations, you have to try to stay relaxed as much as you possibly can. And the only way I could do it, Mud, was to not think about my body, not think about mechanics. The only thing I would think about is trying to hit the mid. And that was the only way that I could get myself physiologically to calm down. Otherwise, the natural reaction is to try to hump up and do more, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, absolutely. No question. And you know what? I'll take it a step further. Bob Miller, the late Bob Miller, pitched like 20 years in the big leagues. Caught at first by Myers, two down. He was the uh, minor league pitching coordinator, so he would uh, travel around and work with the pitchers. And I remember him meeting us at Double A Shreveport in the Texas League. And I was, I was throwing a bullpen, and I was like, uh, humping it up, right? He goes, "Hey, dude, come here, step off." Talked for a little bit. He goes, "Rather than trying a little harder, try a little easier," and it made sense. Tough though to trust you, you know, to, to back up because what are we taught as kids? Work hard, 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 harder, harder. We got to go hard, right? Try backing off a little bit. Because if you back off a little bit and you don't have success, guess who you're going to be mad at? Yourself. Mud. Yes. You're going to be mad at Mud. <laughs> Zach Kozart grounds it foul. That'll end up it's like, in the dugout. It's like, you know, I've worked with you for a while. And there are times, I haven't told you this, but there are times I think you're trying a little too hard. You think so? Yeah. Over the with, top. Your, with your announcing. <laughs> and I think you should maybe just try a little easier. So should I slow down? Yes. Oh. Am I talking too fast when this happens? Sometimes. The deep short. Knocked down by Coleman. Stays with it. And no play at first base. Able to knock it down, but Kozart's got good speed and beats it out. Throw from Coleman and that brings up a string of eight in a row retired by Chassin. Pretty good speed right there, huh? One and two for Cincinnati. So you put the ball in play and you put a little pressure. It's out and it's extended and coast It looked like an off-speed pitch, maybe a changeup. Catches it out front. Boy, that would have been really interesting if Dusty comes up with that one cleanly. It would have been a sprint to the finish line, baseball and runner at first base. Two down, Cozart at first and gives Joey Votto a chance here in the last of the third inning. Single and an RBI in the first inning for Votto. Did you just see, remember we had that close up shot of Votto before? Did you see him surveying the whole field? He was in the batter's box getting ready and his eyes were just kind of surveying. The defense. I don't know if he's going to do it again, but th th this was the shot before the last time. He's looking at the pitcher. Now he's kind of looking out the outfield a little bit. I don't know whether it's just like maybe a mechanism that he has to relax before he focuses in on Chassin. This is the first uh, pitch. Uh, he's kind of looking out there, looking to the right. Looking to left center, and then focus it. And you know, some guys have soft focus, some guys had hard focus. Maybe they don't want to be focusing on the pitcher for that long of a time, so they just kind of wander their eyes a little bit. Choking up pretty good here. Oh, yeah, two. Gosh, that's amazing how much he's choked up there, isn't it? <laughs> Considerably. I did not notice in the first two pitches, but maybe down 0 2 here. Yeah. Choke it up. Two strikes on him. RBI for him, his 79th RBI of the year. And the difference in the game. Fly ball, pretty deep. Not towards deep left center field. Margot back on the track. And oh, that ball is gone. A two run home run for Joey Votto, his 30th of the year, puts the Reds on top three to nothing. The infield hit followed up by the home run gives Cincinnati a three nothing lead. And all the runs driven in by Joey Votto. Well, we just talked about Joey Votto choking up. He stands right on the plate. He takes this ball on contact, outer third. 1-2 pitch 
taking it the opposite way with some authority. Wow, great plate coverage, great bat control, and of course, the power the opposite way by Pato. That's a good at bat. Two down, bases empty, thanks to that two run home run. Here is Adam Duvall. Struck out looking in the first inning. Thirtieth of the year now. Joey Votto. You're looking for that 3100 number. Now with 81 RBIs on the season and three in this game. Ted Klazuski has been tied. By Joey Votto, his 251st home run. Johnny Bench all time, 389 home runs in Cincinnati Reds history. Big clue. It's such the big guns that, that remember that's when they went to the sleeveless vests, right? Shift on him on the left side of the Padres infield. Swahe, the second baseman, going to the left side of the infield to join Holman and Salarte. The ball, a strikeout victim in the first when looking. Swing and a miss, and he strikes out this time, swinging. He thought he fouled Tipton. Three nothing red. Baseball brought to you by Honda. Hurry into the Honda Summer Bration Sales Event today. And by Saquon Casino. Play, win together in the heart of San Diego. Joe Morgan statue outside Great American Ballpark here in Cincinnati. Hall of Fame second baseman. Part of those big red machine championships here in Cincinnati. Green's team trailing here three to nothing as we move into the fourth inning. Top of the order, Manuel Margot, Carlos Azuaje, and Jose Perella. Expected a bat here in the fourth inning for the Padres. See if they make any adjustments here against Adelman, who started this game, retiring the first nine Padres that he has faced. Three by way of the K. One, two, three, third inning on three ground ball outs. Oh. 
Looks pretty good so far tonight. He does. Avoid the sweet spot. Some balls put in play off the end of the bat. Line towards right center field, and that ball is going to get down. A gapper back to the track in the wall. Margot headed for three as he rounds second. The throw to third is going to be close, and Margot will be out at third. And he took a gamble and got back into the infield pretty quickly. Andy Green may challenge this. It was close at third base. Well, first and foremost, I think he should have. Pulled up at second base. Lead off double. Chances are he's going to score on a base hit. The first out at third base. Hey, probably a matrix type slide or slide more towards home plate side would be a better slide of being safe. But uh, my initial reaction is, you know, take the double. Take the double with nobody out. So first hit of the game for the Padres Manuel Margot gets credit for a double but got down at third base. Carlos Suave struck out swinging in the first inning. To right field and a sinking liner that's going to get by Winker. Back to the track of the wall is Suave. In the second base has himself a double. Gamble out there by Winker in right field on the sinking liner. Get by him quickly, and Billy Hamilton, the speedster, backed him up. That is so key. That's a really nice play by Billy Hamilton because Joey Votto, he's laying out. Check that, Jesse Winker. Jesse Winker laying out. Well, it'd be a heck of a play if Joey Votto can get out there and do that. Not the case. And Aswahe will take. The double. Jose Perella struck out swinging in the first inning, 0 for 1. Well, second time around, Donald. The uh, the base running, Manuel Margot out at third, but it's a double hit hard. A Suaje hitting the ball hard. Let's see a Perella. And company can do something second time around. A little different result here so far against Adelman. 40th pitch for the Reds right hander coming up. Foul tipped 0 and 2. Well, first time through just 239. 257. Second time through, third time around, not so good. Jumps up over 300. Or it's second with one down here in the Padres' fourth inning. And on the thumbs and foul back. And as I mentioned, going back to Adelman, talking to some of the Cincinnati people, they said there's not one thing that really sticks out to Adelman like it's wow. You know, some pitchers have that nasty split finger. Some people have that uh, nasty biting slider. There, some pitchers have the 98, 99 mile an hour fastball. That is not Tim Adelman. Not one thing is really a specialty or makes him stick out. So he's got to be right on his game. In the air to left field, hit pretty well. That's deep, far, and gone. A home run. Jose Perella with his sixth home run of the year. The Padres right back in it. Now three to two Reds. That was a shot by Perella. Get out of here in a hurry. Some hard hit balls here. Second time through against Adelman. Talk about a mistake. 0 2 curveball 75. Oh. He hanging, he banging. That that was off the facade. That was off the yep. the ribbon, the scoreboard of the upper deck. It's a one run game now. There it is. 
off the ricochet of the facade there. Yeah. There is Solarte lined out to left field first time up. Now this is into center field a base hit for Solarte. Four straight hits here for San Diego. Morella hits his name. Very nice. 418 feet. That ball got out of here off bat 110 miles an hour. Guess what the launch angle was? I'm going to go 35. Oh, come on. That's too high. <laughs> Seriously, it's too high. It's gone. <laughs> All right. 19 degrees on the launch angle. That's a line. That's. Wow. That's. Myers grounded out to third base. First time up, getting you a second look. I guess I overshot a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The higher I would think the higher the launch angle the harder you have to hit the ball for it to go out correct. I don't know. Well think about it. The more you get underneath the baseball the harder you have to hit it for it to, to go farther. It's just physics Don. Come on. Think about it. You hit the ball hard on the line it's going to travel farther than if you hit it. Higher in the air higher launch angle. Is it really that difficult. I mean you went to college <laughs> I did it. I get it. You don't. I have trouble getting my arms around it. Check on Solarte back to the bag. Just a couple steps to get back. How about this analogy? Golf club, two iron, same swing, eight iron, same swing. Which one's going to go farther? Uh, the two iron. Correct. Why? Because of the angle of the club. It's going to have a lower launch angle, right? So therefore, to hit the eight iron as far, which is probably impossible, you're going to have to swing harder because of the angle of the club for it to go farther. Three-zero pitch coming up to Myers. Well, nice segue. <laughs> <laughs> they had the green light there, three-zero. Yeah, he fouled it off. He got a fastball too. Mm -hmm. And once again, this ballpark, up away, take it that way. It's going to get out of here easily. Look at Will's reaction. How did I miss that? Oh my gosh. He is talking to himself right now. He's had two pitches to do some serious damage. Look at this pitch. Oh. <laughs> Was 3 0. Oh, now full count. Pitch 50 coming up for Adelman of his outing. Goes Myers takes strike three throw down and Salarte has himself stolen base. Myers goes looking for K for Adelman in his first out, but Salarte potential time run now in scoring position. Adelman goes with the three-two breaking ball. Salarte's off with the kick. Here's the pitch taken for a strike. Now it's a matter of avoiding that tag. Salarte has the advantage of a bad throw on the hop to second base. There's the flash look. And he slides in safely. There's Hunter Renfro. He'll take a breaking ball up and in. Renfro struck out swinging in the second inning, 0 for 1. With the ball so far, hitting at 353. Fielder who spent time on the DL in July, the neck injury. Fouls this one off the catcher, Tucker Barnhart. He goes with the traditional mask right off the grill. Looks like no shock absorbers on that one, like the one Austin Hedges is wearing. It's more the uh, traditional cage. I'm 
trouble here getting the signs right. Yeah. So let's have a chat. They're saying. You know, this seems more like a discussion. Hey, what do we want to throw here, rather than going over signs? Because if they were just going over signs, hey, first sign after two, whatever, bang, we got it. I think this is more of a strategical talk about how they want to uh, difference in philosophy, maybe. Exactly. Jenkins, the pitching coach out there. On the same page now, the count of one and one to Hunter Renfro. Swing and a miss on a pitch headed away at 92. The ball had a little cut on it. it did. 92. Yep. Good movement. Yeah. Perfectly placed. And then the, the, the beauty of the cutter is that you don't have to really throw it that hard. It's the movement that gets you. Oh, this one gets the home plate umpire. Like Everett this time. Right forearm, it looks like. Oh, off the bicep. Foul tips in the sequence. Tucker Barnhart, the catcher. Mike Everett, the home plate umpire, both have been tagged in this inning. One two pitch coming up to Renfro. Up. It's up at two and two. Four strikeouts for Adelman in his outing. Three and two thirds. Here's Salarte, potential tying run in scoring position. Green, but it's ball three, full count. Well, he's gone cutter away, change up, tried to go inside there. I think first base, somebody might throw him a breaking ball here. He in the dirt, and that's ball four. He did. Renfro walks here aboard with runners at first and second and two down. MLB.com at bat is your number one mobile app for live Padres baseball. Stay connected with a fully customizable experience. Get Padres home screen icons, app features, as well as game day, live game video highlights, radio broadcasts, statcast news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat today. Two down runners at first and second for San Diego and Austin Hedges. 0 for 1 grounded out to the pitcher first time up. Curveball in there for strike one. I'm trying to settle down here. About four straight hits in this inning, including the two run home run by Jose Perella. See, uh, Barnhart tried to bring that one back in. Yep. Took it off the outside and back to the yep. outside edge. Yep. Sixtieth pitch of the night for Adelman. He yanks that in the dirt. So Sixty pitches through three and two thirds innings. Not out of this inning yet. Well, hitters count. Chance for a big hit right here. Do some damage. Three and one. And he is trying to keep the ball away. He's giving Austin Hedges right field.
Fly ball down the right field line. Winker headed towards the line. Still going. And into foul ground to make the catch. It ends the inning. But a two run shot for Jose Perella gets the Padres closer. At the end of three and a half, it's 3 2 Cincinnati. Thoughts and prayers go out to his family and uh, sad day he lost a great man. Uh, uh, I lost a great teammate back in the day uh, played with an 86 when we went to the World Series. Uh, he was a glue. He was a glue to our clubhouse and uh, respect him. He, he brought credibility to our team and uh, it's going to be missed. And Glenn Hoffman reflecting on the passing of his former teammate Don Baylor who passed away today after a 14 year battle with a rare blood cancer multiple myeloma. Known for his 19 years in the big leagues for bringing power to the plate as well as his toughness. You guys all know that he led the league seven times in being hit by pitches managed for nine seasons in the big leagues as well. Also was a hitting coach for multiple teams. The baseball world certainly mourning the loss of Don Baylor guys. Yeah, a very sad loss of Don Baylor. I know the guy you played for. I did. I was fortunate to. Uh play for Don Baylor first year in Colorado with the Rockies in 1993 and there you see the numbers for Don Baylor and what he did and you know baseball aside what just a great gentle man a great guy affectionately known as Groove he uh, he was baseball through and through and a, a big loss for for everybody involved with the game of baseball uh, kind of manager was he? Was he a player's manager? Yes, because I think he was a player's player. And Glenn Hoffman said he's a teammate. I think he carried that over in the managerial role. Um, even though he looked intimidating, he wasn't that intimidating. He just expected you to go out there and bust your tail and give you 90 feet. Like you said, hustle earlier, right? You didn't have to be the quickest guy on the team. He just expected you to go out there and, you know, he, he rooted for you. Uh, obviously, he wanted you to su succeed. And I'll tell you what, talk about a guy like when you gave him a hug. I mean, it's like hugging a barrel. It's a big man. Oh, he's a big man. Got hit by all those pitches. Never seemed to phase oh. him. Big loss. Suarez batting with one down. Fly out to center field in the second inning. 0 for one. You know, he was that type of guy where he wasn't like rah rah rah. But he was very low key, but when he said something, it spoke volumes. Great deal of respect ah. yes. by his teammates. Yes. Well, Padres getting two back in the top half of this, the fourth inning. Two run shot by Jose Perella. Chassin. And the Padres trailing by a run for Perella, his sixth home run of the year. 
Full count now. You know I've seen a lot of mistakes tonight Don from both sides pitchers one of the more for Adelman get away with it have been getting away with pitches over the heart of the plate that was a breaking ball there to Suarez that he would like to have back. And that's ball four a one out walk for Suarez second walk. By Chassin in his outing. Bring up Jesse Winker. Winker struck out looking in the second inning. Three strikeouts so far in the ninth by Chassin. Seen winning his last three starts at San Francisco, at home against the Mets and the Twins. And that record up to 11 and 7 on the year for Chassin, his 23rd start of the year. Runner goes, grounder to first. Meyer still going to second. They get the out there, and nobody covers first base for an attempted double play. Chassin became a spectator, didn't get over there. Got to get over there. Somebody's got to be there at first base. And being a force play, it's the right play, getting the lead runner from Will Myers. Look at he he just has to get it to second base. It's a force play. Out. Nobody to throw to for Dusty Coleman. Whether it's Chassin or Swahe, somebody's got to be covering on that play. So a defensive laps there for the Padres. As a runner at first now with two down, they had an excellent chance for a double play. The hard part was going to be the play at second base. Yeah, yeah. That was very close. They did get the force out. So two down, runner at first, and Barnhart will foul it off to the left out of play. Over one of the game for the Reds catcher as he flies out to center. I was going to say, thank goodness Will Myers gets that out at second base because. If he were to not throw to second and then think about going to first by himself, nobody's covering to toss to. And it would have been a race for him taking it himself. On a strike here to Barnhart. Seen coming in with an ERA just under four, 3.99. And a grounder back to him. Nice play. Jumping off the third base side of the hill. The toss to first in time against Barnhart. And to end the fourth inning, we head to the fifth, three to two Reds.
Oakland Padres as we head to the top half of the fifth inning and an interesting setup here in the National League Central. A lot of people surprised by what the Milwaukee Brewers have been able to accomplish this year. They just slid out of first place with the Cubs on top right now. The Cardinals are three and a half back and the Pirates four and a half back. And of course, uh, some big contributors this year, NL Central standouts. Wilson Contreras, who hit two home runs yesterday for the Cubs, and since the break has 10 home runs. Zach Davies in four starts since the break with a 0.94 earned run average, and Lance Lynn 4 0 with 1.21 ERA. I think this is going to boil down to pitching. The Cubs, right now, they're 13th in the National League in average, really not hitting the ball. But as far as pitching is concerned, fourth in ERA. But that's a position player we featured for the Cubs. I mean, I'm not going to say it's going to be a photo finish. For some reason, I just feel that the Cubs are going to end up winning that division. Took them till the All Star break really to kind of get it together. First half, very inconsistent. And the key to the beginning of the second half of the Cubs has been their quality starting pitching. They're going deeper into games now. John Lester has been tremendous. In the second half, no decision yesterday against the Nationals. Dusty Coleman, last three games, four for nine. Getting it off here for the Padres in the fifth. Recently, the Cubs bullpen hasn't uh, been doing well. 11 no. earned runs over 12 innings plus. That's that's a uh, burr in the saddle. Carl Edwards Jr. yesterday tagged with a loss, four runs allowed. Grand slam by Matt Wieters for the Nationals. To center field, Hamilton on the run. He'll dive and he can't get it. It's by him. Backed up by Duvall. Heading for second is Coleman. He'll get there standing. So a double starts the fifth inning for the Padres. Dusty Coleman delivers. You know we're starting to know uh, more and more about Dusty Coleman but remember we mentioned that Billy Hamilton plays on the shallow side because he can get the baseballs in front of him with that speed while well, this one he lays out it's the short hop backing up is always key when that happens and trying to get to from Dusty Coleman he can run a little bit now too. So it's second base here to begin things in the fifth representing the tying run. I see an already squaring. And he may have poked that. We'll see. I thought he did too. They're going to check and no. Oh. Thank you. Jordan Baker, first base umpire, said he didn't offer. He definitely poked that, I thought. I thought so too. Watch the head of the bat. Square. Pitch is coming. Oh, oh yes, yeah, he that, did. That's a poke. Yes, it is. <laughs> Got away with one there. One and oh, the count. Throw to second base and Coleman's got to get back and he does. How sweet would this be? Square to bunt, pull back, butcher boy, dinger for Jolis. Nine for 39 at the plate coming in. 231 average on the year. Two and one. That wasn't pretty. No. I think he kind of lost his balance yep. over himself. And on the grass at third is Suarez. So is Votto at first. Anticipating the bunt by Chassin. And he gets it down. The catcher Barnhart will throw him out. Sacrifice complete. As Coleman takes third base. Two to four of the sacrifice. And high fives all the way around for Chassin as he approaches the Padres dugout. Way to go, Haas. Hey, way to get him over. Hey, way to get it down. Hey, nice going. Hey, good job. We'll get him in for you. Nice going. Sounds from the dugout. <laughs> One out runner at third infield in all the way around now for the Reds. As Mark go. We'll take ball one. Hey, watch for remember Barnhart just threw behind the runner at second base, right? When Coleman was there. 
Watch for the snap throw down to third base, even with the front door closed and Margot in the right handed batter's box. Suarez is playing very, very closely to third base. In fact, he is on the line right now. On the ground towards short as the throw will come home and the tag is applied. Barnhart got him apparently on the way by. Shortstop Cozart coming home on a ball that had tons of spin on it was hit sharply. And Coleman thrown out at the plate so the infield end works there for the Reds. This throw from shortstop brings Barnhart into the baseline. He's got to go get the baseball and Coleman tries to do the matrix to try to avoid it. Tell you what. Foul side to catch it. Oh did he get him. He got him on the hip pocket. Did he. Yep. I was wondering if that forearm got him. I mean, no argument from the pottery dugout. So the two down, Mark Go at first base, and Carlos Iswahe, the batter. What a difference second time through from first time through against uh, Adelman. You know, that play happened so quickly, and, um, you know, usually a guy on deck is going to be directing traffic a little bit. You know, for the on deck hitter, let's check it out. Gets him. Did he have the ball in his hand or was it in the glove? I think both the ball oh, Really? Was, was the ball the separated from the glove? I, didn't see I mean, ball. I know I'm getting down to. Yeah. But if, if catcher has ball in hand and in glove, that ball's got to be in contact with the glove. If that ball is out of the glove just a little bit and he hits him with just a glove, that's not an out. Fouls it back. First time through, Padres were 0 for 9 with three Ks against Adam. Second time through, 5 for 7 with three doubles and a home run. Some adjustments made second yep. time through. Action in the pen for the first time. Right hander Wood up now for the Reds. Pitch out. Saw one of those in Pittsburgh, I think. You don't see those too often. Not as much, that's yeah. for sure. Short lead at first for Margot. Two down. Check on him. Still has to dive back to the bag. An action out there. Blake Wood, first time he has been up in the game. Pitch 75 coming up for Adelman. You hang him a breaky ball right here. Speed of his bat. He can go yard on you. Mm. How's that for analysis? Really good. Mm. <laughs> that was that was exactly what I was talking about. Breaky ball, tried to yep. back door it right. It catches a lot of play right into the swing path, the speed up the bat of a Swahe to where he can. Put one into the, uh, the pottery bullpen. On the ground and into right field, a base hit. Margot hitting for third base as Winker's throw is going to be cut off. And it's first and third now with two down. Swahe with his second hit of the night. Sharply through that right side of the Reds infield. After the breaky ball taken for a strike, it looks like Adelman, does he try to throw the piece of cheese by him? Yes, he does, the two seamer. And Aswahe is quick to that baseball. It's like trying to sneak a little piece of cheese by the rat. You can't do it. He's all over it. Ryan Price headed out there to make a change with runners at first and third and two down here in the fifth inning. And that'll be the night for Adelman. So a pitching change from Cincinnati with the Reds on top three to two.
All right, thanks very much, Mike and Mark. As this pitching change is brought to you by El Cajon Ford, Blake Wood, first out of the pen for Cincinnati. Two seamer slider, four seamer, and a split about 96 97. Hasn't allowed a run in any of his last three appearances. That's over four innings. A couple of hits and uh, four strikeouts. Upper 90s for this right hander. And that's not a good stat right there, Don, huh? Most innings by wow. bullpen. And into it pretty early tonight. The starter only went to four and two thirds and 76 pitches deep. Yeah, we're talking about in our pregame show the home runs also allowed 61. A short leash tonight for Brian Price. So Adelman coming out. Tying run is 90 feet away here, potentially for the Padres. Two down in the inning. Did not give Adelman the opportunity to get out of it himself. Make himself eligible for a victory, not eligible right now. Did go the minimum necessary to hang with him. Back is a Swahe at first base. And you know, when we talked about stats, remember how third time around, how the average jumps up? Yep. And that's exactly what Brian Price is thinking. A new arm, a new look, a guy who throws harder. Padre hitters are going to have to turn up the dial against Wood. Jose Perella struck out in the first, homered in the fourth, and a hack here jumping after that. Away, one and two. Could make contact on the slider. 89 mile an hour slider. There we go with third is Swahe at first, two outs. It's on top three to two. And a grounder right side. Jeanette will spin and fire to first for the out. And it gets the Reds out of the jam. Blake Wood comes in and gets it done. Padres strand a pair. As we get ready for the bottom of the fifth inning, time now for the San Diego fan of the game. Padre Friar Faithful, representing here in the Queen City. It never gets old seeing the old 19 Tony Quinn jerseys and uh, sporting the brown on the road. Love it. Now Padres got closer to tying the game last inning, but it's into the bottom of the fifth we go. Reds have a 3-2 lead. Jose Peraza is pinch hitting here in the pitcher's spot. Two fifty five hitter four homers and twenty seven runs batted in into his one hundred and sixth game of the year. Blake Wood tonight as we look at action Michael Lorenzo 
came to the ballpark didn't know that he his job tonight was to just get one hitter out and call it a night. The life of a reliever. Sometimes you go two plus. It was a big out too. It was a huge out. Ball shot seen about to throw his 75th pitcher of the night. Strikeouts on the night for a shot scene. Two walks. On the ground to Myers at first base. He'll take it himself to the bag for round number one of the fifth inning. Close captioning for tonight's game is brought to you by Wiener Schnitzel. <laughs> Top of the order, Billy Hamilton coming up here. He tripled and scored in the first inning. Line down to first base in the third inning. So one for two on the night against Jolice Chassin. Always got to worry about the possibility of a bunt. So Solarte in the third, and Will Myers is striding in at first base. Infield grass. I've always said if I was pitching against a guy like Billy Hamilton, I'm pounding him up in the zone, up and in. Have him hit the ball in the air. You know, I mean, he's not a he's not a home run threat. Uh, of course, he's hit home runs in his career, but still, he's got three home runs on the year. He wants to hit the ball on the line and on the ground, right? No bad hops in the air. It foul two and two. Hamilton since the All Star break, getting in 289. 44 stolen bases, leads the majors. Foul tip there that gets a piece of Hedges. Not the head, looked like the hand this time. So he's got the strap holding on the glove there on the wrist. I think it was off the heel, huh? Well, the tip, tough to tell. Is it tip? Tough to tell. Can't tell from that angle. On the ground, back to Chassin on the back hand. He picks it. Throws to first, two down. Well, I've seen Chassin field his position very well all season long. Was in a ready position, ready to go, and yep. sharply hit right there. Two down. Pretty athletic. He moves around the mound uh, quite nicely. Two down for Zach Kozar. Walk in a single. He uh, scored a run. Ah. Yesterday coming off the 10 day DL. First start since July 24th. And a quad injury had him on the DL for the Reds. First time All Star this year. Third Reds shortstop to start for the National League. Join Barry Larkin and Dave Concepcion. Two pretty good shortstops. And the first sets Larkin to make an appearance. Start at shortstop, an All Star game for the National League. Base hit of the All-Star game. Goes off Dylan Batances. Strike call outside corner, and it is two and two.
Kozar tonight has walked in single, so scored a run. Swing and a miss, slider again, and that one strikes out Kozar that ends the inning. That's the fourth strikeout for Jolie Chassin. The Reds have got themselves a 3 2 lead through five innings. Summary and Joey Votto back in the first inning with an RBI single to right fielder would score Billy Hamilton who had tripled and got the Reds on the board one to nothing. And Joey Votto shortening up and hitting a two run home run in the third inning to put the Reds on top three to nothing. It's 30th home run of the year. Andres would have an answer though in the fourth inning after his Wahe had doubled. Jose Perella with a two run shot. Off the facing of the upper deck. Padre is back within a run. It is three to two. Shot seen so far in five innings, giving up those three runs. Tim Adelman chased from the game after four and two thirds. Home run for Perella, his two run shot, and Votto, his two run shot. He's driven in all three. Reds runs in the game. Boy, the numbers really told the story about Adelman as the uh, first, second, and third time around. Perfect one through nine, and then the Padres got to him. Well, Michael Lorenzen becomes the third Reds pitcher of the game. Look at the guns on this guy. <laughs> See the biceps on him? Look at his right bicep. He's oh, Jack. He smokes. Jack. He's Jack. <laughs> I would wear a tighter uniform if I had that. Shorter sleeves? Yes. I'd show them off more. You got it flaunted? Kind of a gun show. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have that. <laughs> so I don't wear tight stuff. Fastball, mid 90s. 95 to 97. Throws a slider, curveball, cutter, pretty much everything. But his his main go-to pitches are that fastball, the cutter, and slider. Fouled at the dish. Full count still to Salarte. That's 97 right there for you. Blake Wood faced one hitter. Jose Perella came in with two outs, tying run at third base, runner at first, and Perella to ground out to second base. Just a third of an inning, but a big out. A lot of ink. On the ground, high hopper for Jeanette. And the first out of the sixth inning.
So one out and Will Myers coming up for the third time. That's the starter tonight Tim Adelman for the Reds. No success. He counted out to third base and struck out looking his last time up. So 0 for 2 for Myers. And a pretty good hitter has been used as a pinch hitter three times this year by Brian Price coming off the bench. Myers fooled, and it's even at one and one. Show some signs to you of coming out of the slump in Pittsburgh. The one thing, yes, and the one thing that I think Will Myers does when he's because he's streaky, he seems to be a streaky guy, right? Using center field, right center field, going the other way. And I know it sounds well, not doing that, swinging at strikes. Strikes out for the second time tonight. Both for three in the ball game, two down. On that particular pitch, and, and Lorenzen throws that slider down out of the Strike zone. The front side opens up quickly. The hip, the shoulders, the hands drag. Before you know it, you're trying to catch up and just make contact to stay alive for a foul ball and swing and miss. Two down in the sixth, and Hunter Renfro struck out swinging and walked. Home runs on the year. Prime to have a big series, I think, here in this four game series here. Great American ballpark where the ball flies. Well, the day after the Padres score five or more runs, get 50% off any regular menu price online order. At PapaJohns.com. Enter promo code Padres5. Popped up into shallow center. Jeanette out. Hamilton in, and it's Jeanette, second baseman, out there to make the catch. It ends the inning. Padres down in order. Reds have a 3 2 lead.
to you by T-Mobile and Max Scherzer wondered how he do after the next spasm six innings two earned runs eight strikeouts they're tied 2 2 in Miami right now with Mike Trout celebrating his 26th birthday against the Orioles hoping for more of the same homering in his 21st 22nd and 24th birthdays and we were talking about the Cubs earlier in their starting pitching has been better and so is Jake Arrieta. Uh, six starts 2.08 earned run average taking on the Giants. Yeah Mike Trout going into tonight 999 career hits. How about this little nugget. 429 of them extra bases. Wow. <laughs> and then Jake Arrieta seven career starts against the Giants a nice record of four and two and even be a better ERA of one nine seven. Joey Votto. He's had a good night tonight. Single to drive in a run in the first inning. Hit a two run home run in the third inning. So he has supplied the Reds' offense, driving in all three runs. Shasin pitching here into the sixth inning. Seven innings last time out for Shasin against Minnesota. Ooh, pretty good pitch. Probably the last inning for Shasin. Seven, eight, and nine do up next half for San Diego. So hopefully a clean, crisp bottom of the sixth here for the right hander. Keep it at three and two. Down the left field line, but foul. Lotto, who is homer tonight, is homer to the past against Chassin. Petco Park in San Diego. And one more tonight off Chassin, so two all together. That's a gap to gap type guy, isn't it? Yes, Don, it is. Right? You know, the one in San Diego with a fastball in, choking up on the bat, better for him to get to. And the one tonight was out and away a little bit. He does a lot of that too, walking, and he walks here to begin things at the bottom of the sixth inning. You know, as we take a look at Andy Green on the right, Mark McGuire, the bench coach on the left. Even though the gentleman on the right is the manager pulling all the strings, believe me, Mark McGuire, he's in the ear of Andy Green. Andy Green asks him a lot of questions, his perspective on things, right? That's what a bench coach is for. But the bottom line is, Mark McGuire, in his own way, is managing this game in his mind, right? Sure. He's looking at the scorecard, look who's coming up next. It's interesting how different managers how far along they look. Different guys will look further sure. along in the game as to what they want to do. In the air to center field struck pretty well by Duvall. Back goes Margot at the wall and that ball is gone. Two run shot for Duvall his 25th of the year. And the Reds take a 5-2 lead here in the sixth inning. The walk and the home run. You look at players that get traded, and you look at the teams that they go to and how well they will benefit. Could there be a player that could benefit more hitting in this ballpark than Adam Duvall coming from the Giants to the Cincinnati Reds in 2015? I mean, I think this ballpark is going to fit him quite nicely. Thirty three home runs last year Duvall. And you know it's nothing against Adam Duvall but Don if you. Play Adam Duvall let's say every day in San Francisco hypothetically as you know he gets. Five hundred fifty at bats is going to hit thirty three home runs probably you know. Probably not. He but will here he will here in this division yeah. And that's nothing against Adam Duvall the guy's got a good swing. He's got some pop in that bat. Two run shot here in the sixth inning. Scooter Jeanette now waiting on an 0 2 pitch. Check swing of the dirt. Did he go? No. 
to check with Chad Whitson, third base umpire. Lovato started this inning by walking. On the ground up in the pen for the Padres right now. Ground from nearby Louisville, Kentucky. They say Louisville, right? Yeah. Louisville? Some do, some don't. How do you say it? I said Louisville. Yeah, too much of a uh in there. It's Louisville. My wife is from Louisville and she doesn't say about it. <laughs> but if you do, that's fine. <laughs> In the dirt. Anyway, I was making a point. The walk. To begin the inning, yes, it hurt, hurts you. 84 walks on the year, compared to 56 strikeouts in the year. Now to strike three, Jeanette strikes out, but he had ball four. Gets the bad news. So my point is, what walks the strikeouts for Joey Votto? It's usually the case. Very, very few players have that. You can do that. Pitches now. It's Joe Lee's shot seen. And Suarez coming up here for the rim. Suarez flight out to center field in the second. Walked in the fourth. That's great command of the strike zone, knowing the strike zone, bat control, staying alive to foul pitches off and work that walk. Right? That's what I gather from that Joey Votto statistic. I didn't hear you, but I'm sure <laughs> you're right. I was talking to the truck. I know you Sorry. were. That's all right. That's just going over the Joey Votto numbers and okay. kind of explaining why he has those numbers the way he does. Great command of the strike zone. Great bat control, fouling off pitches, working a walk. And the more you foul off pitches, the fewer times you strike out. So hence more walks and strikeouts. Makes sense. But he's got power too. Yes. Which is the part that makes it different. 30 home runs now in the year. That's amazing. I mean, you see a lot of guys who are strikeout guys with right. 30 home runs right. because it's either a strikeout or a home run. Yeah, they're, they're swinging. They're punching out 160 yeah. times a year. This guy's not. Ah. In there for a strike. Breaking ball. And Suarez thought he had ball four. Full count. Fly to center and walks. Third plate appearance against Chassin. Trying to work his way through the sixth inning. Has not. Not out of this inning yet. Here's a little flare that Myers goes back to make the catch on. Jesse Winker coming up. Jesse Winker coming up now, uh, struck out. Popped up, foul ground. Back is Hedges, and that will end the inning. Two run home run, though, for Adam Luval, and it is now 5 2 Reds.
5 2. Reds have the lead over the Padres thanks to a two run home run last inning by Adam Duvall. You know, we mentioned earlier uh, some mistakes thrown by both sides. And Jolie Chassin, just that one mistake, got taken advantage of off the bat of Adam Duvall for the two run shot. Well, there's still plenty of baseball left. Only Trentley by three. Austin Hedges leads it off here in the seventh inning. Hedges 0 for 2. He's grounded back to the mound and fouled out down the right field line. Look out. Kind of diving into that pitch almost. Fastball coming up and in it. 95 miles an hour. Talk about quick reaction. Lorenzen want this one down and away. Yeah. You know what? Uh, we, we have the luxury of watching our replay, and you can see it's really not that close, but I'll tell you what, the ball coming in that quickly, that'll get your attention. On the ground and by the dive of Kozart at shortstop. Out to left field, Austin Hedges with a base hit to begin things here in the seventh inning. His first hit of the night. Well, the Padres need multiple base runners here and a nice start staying on that ball, hitting it sharply up the middle, taking it back. Using the big part of the field on the ground, even though it's the uh, the six hopper. Looks like Kosar was playing him a little bit over towards the third base side, beating that shortstop diving for it. Time called something in Dusty Coleman's eye. Grounded back to the mound in the third, doubled in the fifth inning. Michael Lorenzen came into the game in the sixth at a 1 2 3 sixth inning. And the ground out strikeout to pop out, but lead off base hit by Hedges. There's Corey Spangenberg who's come out on deck. He would bat in Chassin's spot. Fastball into Coleman. In the air, down the right field line, headed towards foul ground and a foul ball. Coleman was at third base with the infield in. When Margot grounded to Cozart at short, and Coleman was out at the plate. Would have been the tying run at the time. Infield in for the Reds worked that time. Yeah, you know, uh, a lot going on there because Dusty's anticipating the, the ball being caught out in front of home plate, so he's going foul. That ball took Barnhart foul, and then Dusty has to make an adjustment to try to. Slide on the fair side of home plate. Strikes out this time. First K for Lorenzen. It was just a very tough play as a base runner. Comes Corey Spangenberg pinch hitting. So that is the night for Jolice. Chassin throws 108 pitches. Allows five runs in six innings. And had a three game winning streak coming into this game. Let's pitch a coach back out there again. Let's see, we'll give the scouting report here on the pinch hitter, Corey Spangenberg. It was a pretty neat story, heartwarming story last year about Michael Lorenzen. He was on the bereavement list because of the passing of his father, who he was very, very close to. And went back for the services, came back, activated, first appearance back out of the bullpen for Michael, pitches an inning plus, gets an at bat. Hits a home run. Very emotional time for the right hander. Great story. Spangenberg going after that 96 mile an hour fastball. At that time, it was just the fourth time that uh, he batted. So, you know, he's That's a reliever. He's a yeah. reliever. Right.
Spanberg pinch hitting here for Chassin, who has grounded out. Chassin also had a sacrifice bunt while he was in there, and a good hitter in his own right, as far as pitchers go. But it's Spanberg batting with one out and one on. And a check swing on a pitch in the dirt. Did he go? No. Check with Chad Whitson, third base umpire. Swing and a miss. Spangenberg goes after that fastball, and that's the hardest one he's thrown at 98. Back to back case for Lorenzen, and now three and all. And the right handed reliever. Good run. Good arm side run to the lefty Spangenberg on that 98 mile an hour fastball. That looked like a high, high two seamer away. Just took off. Yep. Hedges is single to begin the inning, still at first base with two down. And well, Margo, the double in the fourth inning was caught trying to stretch it into a triple, thrown out at third base. One for three night for the Padres center fielder. Back at that fastball, headed down. And a throw down, not going to get him. So reaching will be Margot as Hedges takes second base. Hit you in the dirt, even after it. Yeah, drop third strike, hot potato, live baseball, got to go. <laughs> two outs, even with uh, first base occupied, right? Fewer than two outs, first base occupied. Don't have to worry about it, but uh, extend the inning. Double. Brian Price going to do a double switch here, it appears, as he comes out. Going to make the change here. With two down in the seventh inning, and the Reds on top five to two. He stepped aside with the pitching change from Cincinnati. All brought to you by Jerome's Furniture, where Jerry's price is the lowest price every day. And by Petco, where the pets go. Back in Cincinnati at Great American Ballpark, where the Reds have a 5 2 lead. Padres have a couple on here and a double switch. Former Padre, Patrick Kiblihan, taking over in right field. 
bat in the ninth spot. Pitcher spot now is seventh with Wicker coming out and into the game. Wandy Peralta. Peralta, another live arm out of that Brian Price bullpen for the Reds. Four seamer and a sinker. Pretty much four sinkers at 97 98. Also throws a slider and a changeup. From the left side. Only one southpaw in that bullpen for the Reds. Renson leaves after an inning and two thirds. Would strike out four. And responsible for the two men on. Wandy leads the pitching staff with 49. Now make it 50 appearances. Half a hundo for Peralta. Edges at second. Marco at first. That's some gas right there from the left side, isn't it? 98 for you. Last 16 appearances, a 1.65 ERA. That's over 16 and a third. Only three earned runs. It's been a two-hit night for us. Swahe. Double and a single. Rattles it foul down the left field line out of play. Grass still up. And it was last inning. Jose Torres was also up. Defensive cut there and tried to stop it, but fouled off to even the count of two and two. Time run at the plate right now for the Padres with two down in the inning. And a little dribbler that is a. Fair ball, and that is out number three. Home plate umpire Mike Everett jumped out there aggressively to make the call. And Barnhart, the catcher out there, will apply the tag that ends the inning right in front of the plate. And we will get a look here at this final out as the Padres, whether or not they're going to challenge it. Andy Green is coming out here to talk to the home plate umpire. Chopped. Okay, it's where he touches it. Kind of tough. Happened so quickly. Andy Green making defensive changes here. So we will head to break. Padres trailing five to two.
head to the bottom of the seventh inning. Seventh inning stretch is presented by your San Diego Hyundai dealers. The Reds holding on to a 5 2 advantage. Padres with some changes defensively. Staying in the game is Corey Spangenberg after he pinch hit last inning as part of a double switch. Moving from third to second is Salarte. And the new pitcher is Kyle McGrath. Was out there on the hill a few days ago in Pittsburgh. Big arm swing right over the top of Kyle McGrath. Made his major league debut on July 30th versus the Pirates. Pitched the perfect seventh inning with two strikeouts. His second appearance for the Padres. Third. Check that. Third. We talked about it earlier. Born in Louisville, Kentucky, resides in Louisville, Kentucky. Attended Eastern Kentucky University. There's a pitch outside. Strike call. 36th round pick in the 2014 draft. That's deep. Love that though. On roster invitee to spring training. Saw him during the spring. Barnhart grounds it foul outside a third. <laughs> Half inning this play right at the plate. Barnhart aggressively coming out. That ball ends up trickling fair. Toward the home plate umpire Mike Everett. Ooh, a fair ball. It's where it's touched. Yeah, it looked like that ball was right on the line, huh? Yep. On the on the uh, the right side of that foul line. By the tag, inning over. Thread over for the Padres. Grounder up over the mound towards short. Dusty Coleman. For the first out here at the bottom of the seventh inning. Barnhart retired. You know, that's a play where I really I tip my cap to the umpires because Mike Everett, he did a great job of getting out behind home plate and getting a good view of it. You know, umpires have to be positioned in uh, certain situations to get a good view, and he did just that. So a little love to the umps. You know what? Next time you're out there and you see an ump, give him a hug. Time you love him. Hug an ump. I said it. Patrick Kiblahan, the former Padre. The double switch. Kiblahan going into right field for Jesse Winker last inning. It was 77th game with the Reds. 207 average, six homers, 14 runs batted in. When's the last time you hugged an umpire, Donnie? I don't know that I've ever hugged an umpire, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, they deserve some love, too. Might have to go down to the umpire's room and just pay him a visit and tell him how much I appreciate their hard work. And I've shaken a lot of their hands, but I'm pretty sure I've never hugged one. I've hugged enough before. Mark Carlson. Mark Carlson, the pride of Joliet, Illinois. Yeah. The biggest thing to come out of Joliet, Illinois. Besides the Blues brothers, Mark Carlson and Larry Grant. <laughs> Best catcher in Joliet ever, Larry Grant. A little bit high for ball three. So that, just seen with the first go ahead. What do you got? I was just going to say McGrath, not a hard thrower by any means. He's got to, you know, spin it, hit his spots below the hitting speed, try to catch guys off balance. And that's his fastball there at 85. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the San Diego Padres. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. One out, one on. Top of the order of Billy Hamilton coming up.
Did you know 10,798 batters have walked this season. 10,798. 2,728 have scored a run. That's 25 percent of the time. So, so the moral of the story is don't walk anymore. Right. Walks will come around and I think. Whoever it was in the truck because I posed that question. To them a couple of innings ago. Mm -hmm. And they came up with that so thank you very much. Is that Chiron Bob down there. Chiron Bob. He's working the keyboards down there and getting that wow. information. 25% of the time. Yeah. He's got the half gloves working. <laughs> Little check swing dribbler down to first base. Myers going to go to second base out there as they get the lead runner in Kimblehan. So three to six on the force out. Hamilton will reach at first base now, two down. Charging to that baseball, and we've seen Will Myers do that plenty this year. Has it in mind that he's going to get the lead runner? No hesitation whatsoever. So two down, runner at first, and Zach Cozart coming up. Walked in the first, single in the third, struck out swinging in the fifth. Oh, he's got the oven mitt. In case he swipes a bag. To protect that hand. You know, were, were you working the game? I have an issue with that because yeah. that's longer than his fingers, it right. looks like. Mm -hmm. So it's like an extension of his hand. Yeah. Gets to the base faster if he's stealing. He leads the majors in stolen bases, by the way, too. Forty four. Line foul outside of third. Zach Cozart has walked, singled, and struck out. That foul ball right there is the perfect example of what I'm talking about. Letting the ball travel. When a guy doesn't throw that hard, you know, you get. See how far he's catching that ball out front, and it's foul. It's really tough for guys the first time around, I think, to really stay back and let the ball get to you, and then bang. Well, if you're used to 95, 96, yeah. and you get an 85, 86. Fly ball down the left field line, foul. See, out in front of it. Taking over for Shasin, who gave up five runs in six innings. Five hits. Walk three, struck out five, and on the hook. Came in at 11 and seven. High drive to left field. Perella going back onto the warning track at the wall, and that ball is gone. Zach Kozar with his 13th home run of the year. It's a two run shot, and the Reds open up this game on top now, seven to two. Fouled a few off out ahead, not this time. He straightens it out. Yeah. Stayed back just enough. It was up in the strike zone. I, I, I think even out of the strike zone. Austin Hedges wanted it up. He gave the sign, he gave the glove up, just didn't get it up there enough. One and two. Send it on its way. Had two outs in the inning, but surrenders the two run shot. Joey Votto has got a home run of his own. Reds had three home runs in this game. Votto, Duvall, and now Kozar. Duvall homered part of a 7 2 Cincinnati lead. What did I say the over under for home runs in this series was eight? You said eight. We got four already this game yeah, combined? I, I took the over. Yeah, you did. 20th pitch of the inning coming up for McGrath. Oh. 
I really didn't say eight. I said, what do you think, eight? No, I think you said eight. No, I didn't commit yeah. to eight. I, I don't think I, yeah. we, we can review the tape. I but think I, we could, but I think you said eight. No, I said. And I said I would take the over. I said, what is the over under for this game? What do you think, eight? I made a suggestion. Right. I didn't lock it in. Well, you set the, uh, the line. <laughs> Pitch for a strike over the inside corner. I don't think so I that says to me that's what you thought. Let me think about it. Yeah, that's what I think you thought. <laughs> Three one coming up here to Votto. Gotta be careful here. Fly ball, shallow left. Morello make his way in and over towards the line to make the catch and ends the inning. But a two run shot in the inning for Zach Kozar. Reds have a 7 2 lead. Oh, Cardinal fans are great. Best fans in baseball. Seven to two. Reds have the lead over the Padres. They had two more in the bottom of the seventh inning. Jose Perella leading it off here against Peralta. We got the final out of the seventh. Jay Perello with a home run of his own two run shot in the fourth inning. And for Perello, his sixth home run of the year. Perello, Solarte, and Myers scheduled to bat here in the top half of the eighth inning. Fly ball to right field struck pretty well. Kiblahan back on the track at the wall. He leaps, and that ball is gone. Second home run of the night for Jose Perello. Two run shot in the fourth, a solo home run to open up the eighth inning. It's a carnival. Two one. Fastball up. If you're going to pitch up here at this ballpark, you better get it up just a little bit more. This one, opposite field. Kiplahan with the effort. How close was it? Not even. First row. First career multi home run game for Jose Perella. Now 
Cody on Harris Solarte. He'll take one to right field. Back goes Kiblahan again. This time he'll make the catch on the warning track. First out of the eighth inning. Solarte put a charge into that. And out number one. Comes Will Myers, 0 for 3 in the game. Myers grounded out in the second, struck out in the fourth, struck out in the sixth inning. 97 by Peralta and foul back. Now that launch angle was, what do you think? Judging, look, okay, I'd, I'd say low, low 30s. What do you got? Well, remember the first home run he hit? What was that one at? I don't recall. 16 or something? I wrote it down somewhere. Anyway, Peralta's second home run was 37. Yeah, that's what I thought. Somewhere <laughs> in there. Yeah. 33 to 37. But it was much higher, and uh -huh. it didn't go as far. So that proves my point. The lower the launch angle, the farther it's going to go. The higher the launch angle, you kind of made it seem like the 30s would be impossible. It'd be too hot. Before. I never said impossible, Don. Don't put words in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, no, that'd be too high. <laughs> it's gone. That's all that matters, right? We can get right down to it. This is hit well, but a foul ball down the left field line out of play. Let's revisit the keys to the game brought to you by your San Diego Honda deal. Well, the first one was harass the Hoya. And you know the Padres they, they did get them out before five Tim Adelman four two thirds but only two earned runs six hits and limit the long ball Padres pitchers three home runs allowed Bado Duvall and Kosar. Well Carter Caps activated today brought up by Buddy Bauman returning to El Paso. And he may see some action here tonight. His Padres debut if he does. Ground ball to short. Diving is Cozart. Throws out Myers. Two down in the eighth inning. The All Star shortstop laying it out there. Pops Myers at the base hit. Plenty of time to get to his feet, gather, and Votto with the toe on the pillow to complete the play. Comes on a Renfro. Struck out, walked, and popped out in the game. Is the fourth pitcher used by Brian Price in the game tonight? His starter, Adelman, did not go the minimum necessary to make himself eligible for a victory as he went four and two thirds. Blake Wood came in, only faced one batter, but uh, left that tying run at third base and he's the pitcher of record right now for the Reds. On top, seven to three. As Renfro will take the high strike. Hunter didn't think it was a strike. Popped up right side, Joey Votto. Into foul ground and back into fair territory to make the catch at ends the inning. Home run by Barella. It is seven to three red.
bit more consistency with mechanics early on it was definitely uh, just getting the arm strength and just getting the ball like feeling like it's coming out good instead of like trying to have to generate extra power you know because it doesn't feel like in the beginning like it comes out like you're used to mid-season form or whatever so you definitely have to build that up like normal and then work on the mechanics. Carter Capps talking about some of the mechanical changes that he's needed to make, and he's acknowledged that there have been a few down in the lower half, guys, so not only trying to get his arm back in shape after coming back from the Tommy John surgery, but making a few mechanical adjustments as well. We'll see what it looks like tonight on his birthday as he makes his debut as a Padre, guys. Yeah, pretty cool. It is 27th birthday, and here he is. We saw him during spring training, and he was working hard at that new delivery, trying to change everything he had done before to make it a legal pitch. To keep that foot which is in contact with the rubber in contact with the ground as he drags and goes towards home plate. That's the issue. We know what Carter Caps can do when he's 100% healthy. I mean this guy's got a live arm. Some serious giddy up. Adam Duvall leading it off here for the Reds. Andy Green was talking about it before the game in the dugout regarding that drag foot, keeping it in contact with the ground. Is that back foot you're talking about, right? The back foot, yep. Because essentially, if you stride, you push off, right? With your push off foot. If that foot comes up off the ground, you're getting, you're, you're starting and then stopping and then starting again. You're getting an extra push almost. You can't hop. No, you can't hop. You can't do that. It looks to me that it is on the ground much more than it was during spring training. Yes. Is it spring training? I don't think it was. Yeah, there, was, yeah, there were a few times there. I agree with yeah. you. I was, I was seeing the same thing. He's worked very hard. They're shifting on Duvall here on the left side, and that pitch away. I, mean, I can't even imagine. He's been doing it this way and now having to change all of that, especially coming off surgery he had. That's exactly what I was just going to say. That's a great point, Don. It's like a hitter changing something very drastic. It's like any other athlete doing something since you've been a kid, right? Mm -hmm. And then having to change it. And then, like you said, you, you throw surgery in there. And Perella takes care of about number one. One down here in the eighth inning will isolate the back foot here. Yep, dragging it all the way until the release anyway. And you know what you can see from the hole in front of the rubber the drag where the drag starts. From that foot. And you know it's a very herky jerky motion right. So to me another thing would be being so herky jerky on the bottom. I mean that's just going to. It, it, it's it's essentially like vibration going up through your body and then being consistent with the release point up top on the on the back end. Now the difference may be here. This was a guy that was throwing upper 90s. Now the velocity a little bit different here. We saw 94 in that last fastball. So the drag now taking away perhaps less could, of a hop, less of the velocity. Sure, could be. Absolutely, good point. And maybe that helps with the location as well, right? I mean, location is key for any pitcher. Throw 93 or 103. If I tried to throw a baseball like this, I'd blow out. Rotator cuff and Tommy John. It's just, you know, under the knife for me. <laughs> Plus, I'd probably pull a hamstring, pull a boiler muscle. I just, you know. I don't think you could I'd pull. Be a, I'd be a white hot mess. <laughs> Can you pull fat? <laughs> I've pulled fat many times. Check swing foul back to the screen. You know, like in the movies, the guy who has the skiing accident and they show him in the hospital, he's got the he's got the body cast on it's traction with with one arm like with a hold by a rope, and, and it's just got the mouth open and the eyes. That'd be, that'd be me after trying to throw like Carter Caps. <laughs>
2 2 pitch coming up here to Scooter Jeanette with one down in the eighth. You know what's amazing to me, too? When, when Carter caps, okay, he drags and that front foot hits out in front, mm -hmm. where his arm is, it's like his arm, his throwing arm, his hand with the ball. It's like behind him. So he's got all this way to catch up to get up on top and throw. That's the amazing thing to me. Pitch to Scooter Jeanette. And a foul tip of the dish. Got a piece of Austin in that one. Been tagged a few times again tonight. Nothing in the head, though. Caps with a 3 2 pitch to Scooter Jeanette, one down here in the eighth. And a liner to right field. That's going to get down and head towards the right field corner. Jeanette is headed to second base. Renfro will dig it out. But Jeanette has himself a one out double here in the eighth. First hit of the night for the red second baseman. This pitch looked like it was in and up, and he got to it. Missed it with location big time. He wanted that one down and away. And Scooter Jeanette. Quick with the hands, getting on top of that ball, keeping it fair as well for the double. One out, Jeanette at second base. Here comes Suarez, third baseman who has flied out to center, walked and flied out to right. Breaking in the big leagues with the Seattle Mariners. 2012, two seasons, parts of with the Mariners, parts of two years with the Miami Marlins. Bluffs off the backside, no throw. Big cut there. 0 and 2. Contra has come out on deck for the red. Good bat in the pitcher's spot. Get that ball twice. See that? Yep. Back swing. Got it again. Foul. Off the bat on the back swing. Jeanette at second. One down here in the eighth inning. Seven three Reds. Ball one, one and two. Total of 118 appearances in the major leagues. Prior to his first appearance here today with the Padres. Saw him at spring training. We thought we would see him in April at some point, but uh, here he is, August the 7th, making his first appearance in a Padres uniform. 1 2 pitch. Uh, 
fastball has been around 94 miles an hour. On the ground to third base, Spangenberg looks the runner back at second. Go to first for out number two. I think that ball came up on Spangenberg. Alcantara going to pitch it here for the pitcher's spot. So that is the ninth for Peralta. Ended up going an inning in a third. Giving up a hit, the home run to Jose Perella. Didn't walk anybody, nor did he strike anybody out. There's many Alcantara. 178 average. Started the game went six innings, giving up five runs. Kyle McGrath went an inning, giving up two runs. Now Carter caps in his Padres debut, working with two outs and a runner at second, and falling behind two and zero. Oh. First of four between the Padres and the Reds from Cincinnati. This will get away, and the third base goes Jeanette. All the way back to the backstop for Hedges. Mile pitch charge to Caps here with two down to the inning. A potential run here, 90 feet away. Got to keep it in slam range, especially in this yard. Ball four. First and third now, with two down in the inning. First walk allowed by Carter Capps. Time now for the Carl's Jr. star of the game and Joey Votto, an impressive night tonight. Votto with an RBI single back in the first inning would score Billy Hamilton for the game first run. Then he hit a two run home run in the third inning. That'll put the Reds on top three to nothing at the time. Had a walk in the sixth inning, which set the stage for a two run home run by Adam Duvall. Scoring two runs, and that home run, incidentally, back in the third inning, his 30th of the year. That's a good year in the big leagues for Joey Votto. Talk about average home runs, RBIs. He's in those lists, top 10. Tucker Barnhart. And the runners at first and third, and two down. Runner goes at first, and this clanks off the glove of Hedges. So a stolen base at second base for Alcantara. Second and third now, two down in the inning. Batting for the fourth time in the game, 0 for 3. Fly down, grounded out twice. Buddy Bauman, incidentally, part of the change in roster today for the Padres. Bauman returning to El Paso with Carter Caps activated today. Yeah, we wish Buddy well. Young, I, I got a kind of a look alike for Carter Caps. What do you got? 
I got a young Christopher Walken. Crazy. Kind of see it a little bit. A young Christopher Walken. Like pre Deer Hunter. I don't know if I ever knew Christopher Walken before Deer Hunter. Yeah, it's a rolls. <laughs> Need more cowbell. Ball four, back to back walks allowed by Caps. All of a sudden now the Reds have the bases loaded with two down. And Andy Green is headed out. Yeah, uh, heavy workload this inning and uh, the first time out at the big league level this year. So, good night's nice work for uh, Carter Caps as far as pitches are concerned. So, the pitching change from Cincinnati with the Reds on top, seven to three. alone it's you know the biggest sport I'm just happy that this club here is like moving up and they're going in the right directions people want soccer here you know people want to, to support something this community wants something you know but but I think they want a winner tomorrow inside San Diego sports explores San Diego's rich soccer culture you'll hear from an established local pro team and another professional team that plans to build a stadium in North County tomorrow tune in after Padres live Phil Maton into the game Tough spot here, two down, bases loaded. Patrick Kiblahan, the batter. It's a high fly ball towards deep right center field. Margot going back at the wall, and it's gone. A grand slam for Patrick Kiblahan. The former Padre taking it the other way to right center field and putting the Reds on top, 11 to 3. Fourth home run of the night for Cincinnati, and this one's a grand slam. Ouch. Mayton trying to get ahead with the fastball. Kiplahan, knowing that he's probably going to try to do that, get ahead early, hunts the fastball, gets it, and breaks it wide open. Now Billy Hamilton. Take strike one. So Carter Caps in his debut ends up going two thirds of an inning and is charged with three of the four runs. Walk two to not strike anybody out. Grounder to short. Dusty Coleman will end the inning, but it is a four run inning thanks to the grand slam by Kiblahan. 11 3 Reds.
Games of the game and the home run tonight for the Reds. Joey Votto in the third inning. Adam Duvall with a two run shot in the sixth inning. Zach Cozart in the seventh inning. This was a two run shot. And more recently, Patrick Kiblihan with a grand slam. The former Padre puts the Reds on top 11 to 3. Big night for Joey Votto. Reds 11 runs, 8 hits, no errors. Padres 3 runs, 8 hits, no errors. And Kiblihan with a grand slam in the eighth as we play to the ninth. Let's bring in a new pitcher. Right hander Iglesias into the game. Iglesias, their closer, obviously not a safe situation, but an inning of work here for the right hander. 19 of 20. But that does not apply here, but you look at his other numbers 53 and two thirds, 63 strikeouts. Big, tall, lean right hander. Austin Hedges with a single last time up and a one for three night for the Padres catcher. Scoreless appearances at one point through the middle of the season. From April 28th through June the 8th, 19 appearances without allowing a run. Converted his first 12 save opportunities of the year before a Corey Seeger grand slam. Swing and a miss. Austin Hedges strikes out for the first out of the ninth. Well, tomorrow night, game two of the series between the Padres and the Reds. It is Luis Perdomo looking for his sixth win of the year. 4.92 earned run average. Sal Romano on the mound for the Reds. Two and three. 4.88 ERA. 4 p.m. start time on Fox Sports San Diego. Second city of this three city tour. A first pitch strike to Dusty Coleman with one down here in the ninth inning. Coleman one for three as he doubled back in the fifth inning. Down 0 2. Swing and a miss, and Iglesias makes quick work of Coleman. Two down here in the ninth inning. To back K's of Hedges and Coleman to begin the ninth. Oh, good breaking ball right there. Kind of a low three-quarter delivery also from Iglesias. I'll tell you what, with the way he throws, Iglesias. Iglesia means church in Spanish. I'll tell you what, as a hitter, you gotta pray you make even contact against this guy. With the stuff that he has. Boy Spangenberg struck out of the seventh. Down a one and one. He's just coming right at you. Why not? With an 11 to 3 lead, fastball up above the belt buckle. Strike three. Spangenberg knew it. And a quick 
One, two, three, ninth inning for Iglesias. Strikes out the side in succession. And the Cincinnati Reds take game one of the series.